heads for prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for yet another opportunity to bring glory to your name. We ask that you will humble our hearts as we approach your throne so that we may do your will and exercise our duties with grace and that you will be glorified in the process. These blessings and others we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, play. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well. <coughs> Good evening, and I wish to welcome you to this meeting of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen. Let us I'll overlook something here where we are, bow our heads for a moment of silence for June McCowan, mother of Cynthia McKnight of the Bastra Police Department, uh, police dispatcher. Let us bow our heads, please. Thank you. Roll call to the current terminal quorum is going. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Armstrong. Here. Mr. Locke. Here. They are all present except Mr. Nason. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Goldman. I wish to welcome you to this meeting of the mayor and board of aldermen. Don't have a whole lot of announcements. Been really, really busy, though. I would like to, to make you aware of we are still working on the industrial site and we have gotten approval from uh, Wade Herpin with the EDA and we are waiting on Mr. Kelsey Short to work with him. Steve, in that I am mentioning that, Mr. Nasaka, do you mind just come giving us a, a briefing on the industrial site? Uh, this is that $1.8 million grant and we are looking at uh, making some upgrades to have shovel ready sites out there that will position Bastrop for hitting the ground with, with industries as they come in. You're right. With new, Remember, the whole goal was to further improve what <coughs> already is a very attractive industrial site uh, through the construction of additional infrastructure, additional roadway improvements and sewer and water and, uh, you know, and, and uh, drainage improvements to make it even more shovel-ready for industry. Uh, we have, uh, the engineers have designed the first uh, collection of improvements. Uh, I want to, uh, forgive me, I don't have the number in mind. It's somewhere around seven or $800,000 worth of improvements. Uh, and uh, and th those were bid. Remember at last month's meeting, you accepted those bids uh, and, and, you know, and awarded contingent upon approval from EDA. And we got that approval from EDA. We await uh, uh, a final approval from, uh, from the state, which should be, you know, any day now, and we can, uh, uh, we can, in that regard, uh, give the contractor notice to proceed and begin uh, construction. What, as well, there's additional funds available, and those funds are being, uh, uh, the engineers will work on candidate additional improvements to make to the site, again, to make it more conducive for industry, and we'll be coming to you with recommendations in the coming weeks for uh, how best to spend the remaining funds of the the state money, the uh, uh, the federal money, and uh, and the city's contribution to that as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nasaka. Uh, and as soon as I hear from Kelsey Short or Ms. King, perhaps you can help me with that. It will help us in expediting uh, what needs to be done. Also, we we need to be mindful of the intersection at the Nav Street uh, crossover. I met with the Chamber of Commerce few weeks ago and, and certainly we want to keep that topic on the burner because the access to the industrial park is very, very important in terms of uh, building infrastructure out there to, for businesses to access. Uh, the work on our city hall, we're very proud of it. We had some press release uh, details from the Daily Enterprise. Thank you for that, that front page coverage. We have one more signature piece that we want to add to the city hall, and that's the state seal, which is bare similar to what's behind my head here. So we're going to add that piece. It will take about two weeks uh, from what the research that we had done for that piece to come in, and I think it will be 
an added feature for our city hall. We are still waiting on, on responses for some grants. We have gotten word on, on others, and we really, really wanted to apply for some new technology with cameras and securities, and I have been waiting on some information that I need in terms of submitting a grant. Seems to be some, some attention to that with the recent incidents that have happened across the country. So that is something else that we need to be mindful of uh, as they make more grant money available. Oftentimes the trend tends to lend itself towards what is going on in the country and, and security is really on everybody's mind right about now. Are there any other uh, announcements? I'm sure I have a lot more announcements in our next meeting. Are there any other announcements, council members? Okay. Thank you so much. Um, we are on item number four, public comments, as it relates to items on the agenda. No comments. Thank you. We're going to get through this agenda. Some may be attending um, the Denman annual event, so we are going to work through this agenda as quickly as possible. Number Item number five. At this time, I will approve a motion, entertain a motion to approve the previous minutes, regular meeting, April 11, 2013. May I make that motion? Properly moved by Mr. Johnson. I second. Second by Mr. Moore. Are there any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, Finance Committee Report Resolution 13-1499, Bills and Claims for the month of April 2013. May I move for the um, acceptance of a resolution 13-1499, Bills and Claims for the month of April 2013? Properly moved by Mr. Locke. Second. Second by Mr. Armstrong. Are there any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, ordinance 13-4317, providing for the incurring the debt and issuing of not exceeding $680,000 taxable sales tax refunding bond series 2013 of the city of Barrister, state of Louisiana, prescribing the form terms, conditions of said bonds, designating the date, denomination, and place of payment of said bonds, providing for the payment thereof in principal and interest entering into certain other covenants and agreements in connection with security of payments and said bonds, providing for other matters in connection there with Mr. Nasaka. Would you talk to us about the, the Walmart bonds and the savings and the percentage change uh, from 5% to 3.3%. Really is a, a, uh, good news uh, with regard to the finance world and also with regard to, uh, to uh, uh, successful decisions uh, that you as a council made uh, uh, a while back with regard to this project. As you recall, back in uh, 2006, uh, Walmart approached the city about uh, building the super Walmart and uh, and had a great story, you know, about how much additional revenue this new Walmart was, you know, Super Walmart was going to uh, going to generate, and also in what sales tax revenue. And they asked you, uh, they asked the council for uh, for a million and a half dollars worth of infrastructure improvements, water lines, roadway access, in order to facilitate and, and make the site ready for that. Uh, the um, uh, the council, uh, you know, believed Walmart. Uh, and uh, and borrowed that million and a half dollars, and I'm happy to report that you know it is six uh, six years later. Uh, we have not only uh, you know repaid a significant portion, about nine hundred thousand dollars of that million and a half uh, dollars, but we've also to the good. In I keep track of the incremental sales tax revenue, what Walmart generated for us per month compared to what the super Walmart generates for us per month. And on an annual basis, over the last six years, uh, the city has netted uh, over $800,000 in additional sales tax revenue. That's after you've paid these, that 900, so really, you know, it's more like $1.7 million because you paid down $900,000 worth of that obligation. Uh, 
So uh, it's, it, it was an investment the city made that made the city money. And uh, we're and this is a uh, here's an investment that uh, that actually uh, will end up ne uh, serving to save the city money. Uh, what for the remaining four years of this agreement we have with Walmart on the bondholder in that case requires us to pay interest at the rate of five percent. We looked at the numbers, did the math, and said, you know, we probably can go out to the market and borrow money cheaper than that, pay off those bonds. And as a result, we have interest savings over the next four years. Turns out that's the case. We competitively bid it among local banks. Uh, Capital One was our low bidder at 3.3%. So that 1.7% interest savings per year over the remaining four years, which is what this refinancing is, uh, saves us approximately $34,000, which is about $8,500 a year in lower debt service costs you know, and, and, you know, in essence, uh, interest savings over the next four years. So, so we're refinancing it, take advantage of lower rates, uh, and, uh, and we're saving $8,500 a year, 34000 net of everything. You know, so, uh, so all told, if Super Walmart continues to track as it, uh, as it has in terms of its uh, sales and as a result tax revenues, the, uh, the net benefit to the city of that investment is probably going to be that million and a half dollar investment after you paid off the million and a half is probably going to be about 1.2 1.3 million dollars to the good for the city so like i said it was a good investment on the city's part to uh, to facilitate uh uh you know economic development and that's what uh you know Kay would say and everybody says infrastructure begets economic development and this walmart project proves that so for all of that, the uh, long story, but this is all about your approval tonight of the, uh, of the, the issuance of these bonds, and it's the last step. Uh, we'll close in about two weeks or so, and, and you'll begin saving that interest. Okay, thank you for that presentation, Mr. Nasakam. And, and we have worked extremely hard. Uh, we saved, was it, what was it, eight, over $800,000 by renewing the sewer bonds, and now, even though this amount compared to the sewer bonds, but every little bit counts when you're in a strapped economy and you have a strapped budget. So for this, I am truly thankful. Um, I need council action on Ordinance 13-4317. I'll make that motion, Mayor. Properly moved by Mr. Moore. I second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Are there any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Nasaka, from driving from down south, coming here. Glad to be here for this. Yeah. All right. Appreciate your service. Uh, this brings us on to item number eight, and I asked Ms. Renita Jenkins if she would come back uh, and, and, and do some explanation. I felt, uh, of course, she entrusted me with doing it. But then I passed the baton back to her, and, and, and because she is the expert, we have worked extremely hard to try to save everything that we possibly can to keep costs down, keep insurance. And with her expertise, she has shopped some rates for us, and she has some summaries she's going to present. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. I um, want to talk a little bit about the renewals. The city, uh, July 1st, is coming up on the renewal for the health insurance, the dental insurance, and the vision insurance. Um, we don't really have to discuss the dental and vision because last year when we shopped that particular product, we got a two-year guaranteed locked-in rate, so nothing's changing on the vision and dental. Premiums are staying the same. Benefits are staying the same. So it brings us to our health insurance. We were a little, in a little bit of a situation last year being that other carriers would not quote the group. And the reason why is the uh, city of Bastrop had a high claim, overall claims experience on and no one really wanted to take the risk. So they declined to quote. They sent us a letter, the proper documentation and all of that. So one of the things that we were focusing on this year was trying to get the city of Bastrop employees healthier. When we did uh, open enrollment meetings last year, we talked a lot about preventive things. We talked a lot about where the employees could go to save money, um, to lower costs, which in essence helps the insurance company save money, which helps premiums stay at a minimal. So um, we talked about preventative things. The uh, employees really took a hold on. There's various reports that I got on getting their wellness done, um, prescription drugs. 
Some people were taking brand, um, non-preferred brand drugs, which of course are higher dollar cost drugs, and they were given a list with some alternatives that they could take to their doctor and speak with them about, and our drug costs went down this year as well. So in essence, we did have carriers willing to quote the group this year. And the key to what we want to do is really create competition. The more competition we have for the account, the better rates that we'll get. If we just got one carrier, we, we have no room for competition. But this year, we were fortunate, and the city employees were we're very good about doing some things to help with that. And so we had uh, Blue Cross and Coventry and Vantage um, willing to quote the group. We got the, uh, and I think you all have that information in front of you, we got the renewals and as it came back, um, Coventry was higher, um, Blue Cross was higher. And um, so it was my recommendation to the city to stay with the current carrier with an increase of 7%, which is a lot better than last year because we were looking at a 24% increase last year. So the city employees really did very well in helping to do their part in, in trying to get the cost down. So we're looking at a 7%, and I'll just tell you, in the insurance world, anytime you can keep your increase in the single digits, mm -hmm. you're doing good. So I was very pleased with that. Um, a Vantage representative, one of the things that I'm going to continue to try to do is I create um, or coordinate the service between vendors. So when someone comes in and they sell a product to the city, they, I make sure that they service after the sale. So we have um, service dates where Vantage, Always Care, Aflac are always here to be available to the employees, and uh, we're going to continue to do that. A Vantage representative will continue to be here every uh, month at City Hall, the first and third Monday of every month from 9 to 11. That's when a Vantage representative is in the room down the hall, available to all employees in case they have any questions or any concerns. Um, one of the other things that I want to work on is Vantage has what's called a wellness coordinator. And they did a, they experimented on a group in Shreveport where they took on a weight loss program and a tobacco cessation program. I've been talking with, uh, her name is Kerry Roussel, about implementing something like that here for the city of Bastrop. And I, and she went over the stats with me and I don't remember, but they were, they were mind boggling on what they were able to do as far as getting their employees healthier by losing weight, lowering cholesterol, blood pressure and all that. So I'm talking with her and I'll come back and present that. Um, there's incentives from the insurance company, and then the, the employer tr tries to offer incentives for things like that. But overall, it really improved the conditions of that group. And anytime you can get your health conditions in control, your premiums are lower. So looking to come back and do some of that. <clears throat> One of the other things that I want to continue to do is throughout the year, I ask insurance carriers, there's various reports that shows um, the claims experience, kind of where the group, and I was actually able to tell um, administration, Ms. Sandra and the mayor, about mid-year that we were looking much better. So we we're very happy about that, and we even stuck some flyers back in the employees' paychecks to remind them, don't forget your prescription drugs, have conversations with your physician. So based upon those reports, I knew we were in a little bit better shape this year, so I was very pleased with that. So I stay in communication with the insurance companies throughout the year to make sure, you know, uh, monitoring that particular data to make sure it's, it's accurate. One of the other things that I'm sure you all have been hearing on the news is health care reform. Um, there are specific mandates that are coming down. Uh, we have a timetable for things, but it's been changing. That's why I have not come back and presented. They said the information would be a little bit more in line around June. So I'm waiting on that, but I'll come back, talk, to, talk a little bit about health care reform and how it's going to affect the um, city of Bastrop. There are going to be certain things that carriers have to do, um, and I'll come back with that to make sure that we're on a timetable, that we're in, in, um, in, in line with that, and that we're being compliant. So I'll come back, and of course, um, we'll, we'll look at that at that point. But a lot of, I think you all have in front of you that my recommendation to stay with the current carriers. The employees, of course, the overall benefit package uh, with Vantage was better. The premiums were, were better. Um, the employees get incentives at different places that they don't get on or the, uh, with other carriers. For instance, um, Monroe Surgical Hospital, Monroe General Hospital. Um, some of the affinity clinics and things like that. So um, overall, that, that was my recommendation, and just really pleased this year that the city was in a much better position, 24% uh, to a 7%. So that says a lot about the city of Bastrop employees. Thank you. I was thinking it was 26%. Really. It, was, it was 24, and we, it was actually a 24% increase, and then we got it down to about 18. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you so much for that presentation. The city of Bastrop is so very fortunate that you have a loyalty uh, to us, and I certainly appreciate your expertise in working with Sandra and working with me 
in shopping those rates because every dollar counts in this draft economy. Council members, do you have any questions for Ms. Jenkins? Okay. Thank you very much. And we're certainly gonna we're gonna need you to walk us through health care reform because I know there's a lot of panic going on around the, the country in respect of, of health care. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was item number eight, which required no um, action on the council, but it was certainly worthy of your hearing her presentation. Uh, item number nine, resolution 13-1500, approving city of Bearship zoning application number 04-006-13 relative to the South Point Homes residential housing development as a planned development per the terms and conditions recommended by the zoning administrator of the city of Bastrop and to perform such other acts in fulfillment thereof that may be necessary and proper. We have another housing development that's coming our way. You know that the Daisy Street uh, development is well underway and we have another one that's going to locate across the street. So uh, Mr. Lee is not here, Mr. McKee you want to do a little briefing uh, as, as our special projects coordinator. There were some modifications that we had to make in order to to get Mr. Perry's housing development. And we're going to have to do the same thing in respect of this um, housing development, some accommodations on our our zoning. To yes, ma'am. It basically, it's, it's the exact same thing we did for the Perry, for Mr. Perry's development. Uh, the square footage on the lots for the structures, for the single family structures, uh, I don't remember the exact square foot. I think it should be somewhere around 10,000 square foot. And they are a little bit less than 10,000 on, on each one of them. And I'll basically, Mr. Lawrence can address this better than I can, but basically what the council will be asked to do is grant a variance or words to that effect. Okay. Thank you for that presentation, and, and this certainly would be in order. We don't want to hamper progress, and I would ask the, the pleasure of this council for favorable um, support of this request. I make the, the motion. I second. Properly moved by Mr. Armstrong and, and second by Mr. Locke. Are there any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. It's going to be a significant shift in the population as we look at the housing development with uh, Mr. Perry's over on Daisy Street and across the street uh, will be this new development that's going to go up. So uh, I've had a previous conversation with the superintendent of education, make him aware of, of these changes in population. Expect there will be a lot of school aged children. So, here again, this is where we have to look forward in our thinking in city government to, to residential areas and where we need to concentrate our efforts and our energy in respect to that. Uh, moving right along, that takes us into item number 10 uh, discussion action, East Madison Pool. Mr. Willie McKee. I asked Mr. McKee if he would uh, put together some information. And we're going to have a PowerPoint uh, presentation and where he will put it up on the, on the screen and we will talk through what is necessary to open the East Madison pool as you requested in the last council meeting. And I certainly want to honor your request as best as possible, but it is so very important to, to have a, have the right information so that you can make the most informed decision, but at the same time recognizing the, the consequences thereof or the pluses, whichever respect that you want to look at it, whether the glass is half full or half empty. Mr. McKee, having said that, would you make your presentation? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mayor, council members, uh, we, we put together this budget in two phases. One, the approximate cost to start the pool up, and and the other, the approximate, the approximate operating cost of the pool for 2013. Uh, as you can see, 
the approximate cost for operation would be approximately $25,200, and for the startup would be $21,100. Now, approximately 12, 10 to $12,000 of that 21000 approximately half of it, is conforming to the new ADA regulation with regard to handicap accessibility to public pools. Up to this point, do you have any questions? Council members? A total cost of $46,300 for the total operation, and this is based on approximately a six-week schedule. Okay. Uh, council members, do you have any questions that you wish to present while we're in the public meeting? Ms. McKee. Yes, sir. By shortening the weeks on opening this pool, would that be a substantial amount of savings? Shortening the weeks would, would not change the startup costs, but it would reduce the operational, the overall operational cost by by some amount, depending on how many weeks. Uh, let's say that's about $4,500 a week right now in operational cost, so if you did four weeks, it would be four times 45. And that's based on six weeks? Yes, sir, that's based on six weeks. Okay. Mr. McKee. Yes, sir. That forty six thousand, it wouldn't all come out on the this budget, would it? Could it part well, of it goes into uh, next year? Next well I guess Ms. Goldman could answer that better than me, but but I, I would say no it probably wouldn't because if you're gonna have it open in July there would be some operational costs in July. Startup costs would probably come out of yeah. this this year's, this year's budget. Okay. Uh Sandra. And, and leading into what you're saying, Mr. Armstrong, I think what we need to think about is, you know, this is an, an item that was not budgeted. So I think that would be the starting point. No, ma'am, uh, it wasn't budgeted. It's, so it, I know for sure part of the, the operation will hit it and probably all of the start of we will get it in time to pay it. Okay. But no, ma'am, it definitely wasn't budgeted, and we're starting to work on next year's budget. So okay. Mm -hmm. That doesn't need to, a decision doesn't need to be made so we can. Okay. Okay, and we wanted to uh, put this information together with you so that you would have uh, what you need in order to make a decision in respect of the pool. Well, I'd like to make a recommendation that we open the pool July the 1st, and also that you could give us a cost analysis for next month meeting for June, what it costs. A second. Uh, wait just a minute. You, you said you would like to make a recommendation. Are you making a motion? Making or a make recommendation a, to open the pool. Motion. Okay, wait a minute. Let's, let's go back. Motion. Are we, are you making this as a motion that you would, you're making a motion to open the pool effective? July 1st. Okay. All right. Mr. Lawrence. Okay, that's... I that's think we all understand at this point. Uh, Mr. Armstrong said uh, the proposal is in the form of a motion to open on June 1st. July, and then July I'm 1st. I'm sorry, July 1st. But then you also want further study to see about an earlier date. So what's certain is opening July 1st, but you're also saying let's look at possibly expanding that more after you do more study to see about June. That's how that's how I took it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and we have a second. Did we get second yes. by Mr. A second. Are there any questions? Discussion? I think I, I may need to make a point uh, that in making this decision, uh, and Ms. Goldman, you might want to jump in on this, it, it may affect some other area of the budget because this is an unbudgeted item 
and, and even if we think of it in terms of, of splitting it in half, of course we know first and foremost the startup cost is, is, is absolutely necessary. So that's 21000 That's that's a given. And then whatever residual costs that will be the remainder of that 25000 of operational costs, which get, increases it a little bit more, that this may come at the expense of cutting somewhere else in that this is an unbudgeted item. Uh, and Ms. Goldman. Yes, ma'am, and I, I want to say there's not an abundancy of lifeguards. So if they don't have their certification ready, mm -hmm. they used to have, do it um, in Monroe, right. but ULM closed their pool. Mm -hmm. The people's got to go to Ruston. Now, if, if you're planning to get it ready to, and open it for July, you need to, we need to find the lifeguards, but then if we say, well, you're going to start to work July, and they get an opportunity to go to work at Shamana Hall quicker, you may not have your lifeguards. Definitely, if you say you're going to open the pool, we've got to start cleaning and spending the money, and your startup cost is going to happen. And that will probably all be out of this year's budget, just depending how quick we can cut the purchase orders, they get it worked, and we pay for it. Mm -hmm. But a cost analysis, another one, would be just that. That's, that's what we've done. Mm -hmm. And two, before we do open it, our insurance company's got to come back and reinspect so, it. Yeah. Okay. So just whatever. You okay. And, and that is the information that really needs to be on the table. Uh, as the decision is made, you uh, made a request last month, and we have done our due diligence to uh, to honor your request as much as possible, with the thought in mind that we may have to cut somewhere else in order to uh, to make this happen for you. And we always have to think in terms of what is in the best and highest interest of taxpayers' dollars. Having said that, um, we had a motion, we had a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, roll call, Ms. Goldman. Okay, uh, Mr. Moore? In favor. Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. Armstrong? Yes. And Mr. Lott? Yes. Mayor, one absent, one against, three for it. Okay, thank you, Ms. Goldman. This motion carries on a one, two, three, three to one with one absent. Moving right along, uh, item number 11, appoint a public works director. It is my pleasure, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to, to appoint Mr. Barry Johnson as director of public works. He has served in this capacity since about around the 1st of February, maybe the very ending of January, Ms. Goldman, and, and he has served well. He has served the city well for 24 years, and and as I'm told, he could literally build a bridge by himself. <laughs> so it is my pleasure to appoint um, Mr. Johnson as Public Works Director. I make that motion. Properly moved by Mr. Armstrong. Second. Second by Mr. Locke. Are there any questions? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Mr. Johnson, you want to say anything? All right, he said, you want to decline? Okay, thank you. Uh, item number 12, uh, Ms. K. King, Morehouse Economic Development. Thank you, C.D. Alderman and Mayor, and uh, I just have a very short uh, kind of information to give out. I know that there are lots of people in the community that are very excited about the Morehouse Bioenergy Project, which is also known as the Drax Biomass. Uh, that's the parent company of this development, which is 12 miles north of Bastrop. And it is 12 miles north of Bastrop because that was a good location for this plant. 
as things have progressed, I just wanted to let people in the community know this, uh, and and the alder and the alderman and city uh, that that project is moving forward. We're looking at possibly as soon as 30 days for startup on that. We have people coming in to the community now from the Drax biomass that are looking for housing, and so we're really kind of looking at um, potentially and. It's going to be an 18-month project. We'll have as many as 200 construction workers in here, and so I've been working very hard this week on identifying housing opportunities because we'd like for as many of these people as we can take care of to remain in the Bastrop area, and that's going to generate a lot of sales tax in this area. So I know that uh, Things have kind of slowed down. The 425 project finished. Uh, we had some other projects, and, and fortunately, we're going to have some housing projects starting too. So that's going to generate a lot of activity, a lot of uh, sales in our restaurants and Walmart, and uh, I'm looking forward to this activity. It, it is surprising to me that there are still people in the community that really don't know that we're about to get a $100 million-plus pellet, wood pellet mill in this parish. So um, I think that as people uh, understand that and we get started on it, that that's going to cause a lot of enthusiasm in the parish. And it's certainly going to help to turn the uh, sales tax numbers uh, around and get us, get us some additional money. So are there any questions on that? No. Thanks. Just thank you, Ms. King. Okay, thank you. Okay, I know everybody's wanting, or those who want to go to them and engineer, a couple more uh, things I let me mention on um, under announcements. The web page. We started working on upgrading the web page, and there's a massive amount of work and trying to do as much of it in-house as possible to reduce the cost of it to the web companies that's doing it. And so it is it's incomplete at this time. But I, I have a plan that I think will, will honor the history of the city of Bastrop in that um, we have initiated the work on it. And I spoke with former Mayor Clarence Hawkins at length, and he is in agreement that we will dedicate a page to give the history of Bastrop, and then it will reflect the work and the accomplishments of the Olive Administration from uh, 20, uh 2009 to 2013, the Hawkins administration from uh, 1989 until uh, 2013, and he is collecting information that he's going to forward on to me. And also the Bond administration, we will capture that the history of the Bond administration. We already have some information because recently we did the memorial service here. And, and information was provided, and from that, that number on back, we will honor all of the, the mayors or mention their names and the dates of service. I think with new technology, we need to capture our history and pass it on in the methods that reflect modern technology. So when someone pulls up that page, then they will know uh, who the Mayor Bond was or who the Mayor Clarence Hawkins was or the Betty offered. I'm not trying to just toot my own ear, but then that's that's a reality. So we are we're gonna work towards making that happen for you. Also the Memory Miracle Fund was a uh, uh, one of my passionate deals that I did for the need the children, the needy families and the seed money, uh, you know, in addition to my own personal funds and funds that we raised throughout the community, the seed money came from the Shreveport Federal Credit Union. So today it was my honor to, to disperse the remaining money of that account to three organizations, one of which is Relay for Life. Uh, that's a, an organization that's dear to my heart, having lost my mother to cancer, which is why I started the whole Memory Miracle Network. Uh, we have the Circle of Hope, uh, Sarah Hawkins, who manages that, and the St. Jude Children's Research, and we have children here who have benefited through the St. Jude's. So it was my pleasure to, to present those three organizations 
with the remaining funds and so that the public will know that the intended use of this money has gone out to worthy causes. I believe that that is all that I have, Ms. Goldman. Can you think of anything else? Okay. At this time, excuse me. I don't have that on my. Thirteen. That is not on mine. Eleven. Okay. I have my agenda doesn't look like yours, but mine has notes on it. Yeah. Uh, we. I am so sorry. It is not on my, but it is on the council members' agenda. <laughs> so, Miss Marshall Cook. Uh, good evening, Mayor uh, Olive and Councilman. My name is Marcia Cook, and tonight I'm representing the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 51 here in Bastrop. Uh, I'm here to ask permission to be able to get on the courthouse square again and ask for donations and give out poppies on Saturday, May the 25th, from like 9 to 1. But uh, before you answer, I want to give just a very brief story on how the poppies come up. In the spring of 1919, amidst complete devastation, the poppies bloomed in abundance on the battlefield of France, where so many of our men had fallen in the battle. And that, a replica of the poppy, has become a memorial flower of the American Legion Auxiliary. The American Legion Auxiliary has pledged 100% of the profits, profits from the poppy distribution to welfare relief for servicemen and women and their families, thus fulfilling the true meaning of the poppy, an emblem of faith faith which is being kept with all those who have died through service to the living. The memorial poppies are made of red crepe paper by hand by disabled veterans in hospitals and poppy work rooms in 40 states, and that the workers receive pay for each poppy made, the material being furnished free from the department in the state in which the hospital is located. Poppies made by the disabled veterans are distributed on the streets under the supervision of the American Legion Auxiliary by approximately 125,000 volunteer workers who receive no compensation. This year we would like to ask you to proclaim May 25th as Poppy Day with an appeal to all citizens to observe this day by wearing a poppy. I'd like to give each one of you a poppy of your own and hope to, to see you drive by the square if I'm approved. Our organization is approved on May 25th, and I okay. have your problems. Thank you, Ms. May Cook. I approach the bench? Uh, yes, ma'am. And, and if you will recall, council members, there are only two such organizations that have been allowed by this council, thank you so much, to collect money on the court, courthouse. <laughs> And I don't believe this requires any council action, does it? It's, it's just a carryover. And we wish you well and, and get with the chief in terms of safety. We want you to be safe out there. I will get with Downey on, on vest. They, uh, they provide us with a vest each year. Okay, so, great. Uh, I will okay. be getting with Downey. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so your... much. All right, now. Are we ready? <laughs> At this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I make that motion, Mayor. Properly moved by Mr. Moore. I second. And second by Mr. Johnson and Mr. Armstrong. Any questions, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? This meeting is adjourned.